right now, today is a day that the Lord hath made. Oh, just rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. All right, if you've got your Bibles today, want to turn with us in the Word of God, if you will, take and turn to John chapter 11. You know what that is. Without even turning, I asked Brother Michael this morning as we come in, I said, that this has been used in a lot of funerals over the years. And John chapter 11, the resurrection of Lazarus. But I, want, I don't know, uh, this kind of stuck with me this week. And as I looked at this, and the more I looked at it, and the more I read it, and the more I, I pondered over this, the real, the more real it became. And it's like, uh, it was, it was just saying to me, have you ever it really got down and been praying for a loved one. I'm talking about praying for a loved one. And that, but there's a word that is in just two verses or three verses of scripture here that I want to, that to really look at. And as we look at this, I want us to look here. Let's, let's read the scripture first. And as we begin to look at this, I want you to look at this, look at the position and look at the characters. Now, don't look, I ain't talking about the character as a, uh, as the person so much as looking at their physique or any like that. But I want you to look at their mannerism. Look at the manner of them. Look at how they presented themselves. Now, these folks were real. These, these folks here were real. They, they, they weren't a put on. And I want you to see these. And when they came to God, they were sincere in what they were doing in order to get the job done. They wanted something done. They wanted something from God. They, they weren't fooling around. They, there was something that was happening in their family and to one of their loved ones and they said, God, this is beyond my help. This is beyond us. You've been here. You've been to the house. I'm not wanting you to look at the furniture. I'm not wanting to show you pictures of how uh, Gracie went to school or how Mama was baptized or how the family done this or all of this. They weren't talking about anything. They were saying, Dear God, we need some help. I'm talking about praying for your loved ones. But they, they wanted God on the scene. They wanted to, to hear from heaven. You know, when you're praying to God, I mean, God wants to hear from you from the heart. God wants you to talk to Him. There, you know, when we talk to somebody and we're hurting or we're needing something, brother, we don't fool around. If you, if you're in debt and you go down to the bank, you don't sit there and tell him how many eggs you got out of the hen nest last week. 
or how, how many miles per gallon your car got. You go in there and you say, you tell him, say, uh, uh, sir, I, I need to borrow some money. You know, my house is in limbo. Or my youngins needs this. Or there's not enough money in our home right now to meet the obligations that are before us. That, you know, I've, I've got a little behind, but, uh, you know, we've got work and we're catching up. And I, I'll see that you get your money back. But, uh, I, I, we need some help. But that's, we, we need to go to God and we need to tell Him uh, uh, in a business-like manner. Go to God and tell Him. Brother, that, what did he tell them? He whipped them out, the money changers. He whipped out the people that were in there for all kinds of reasons. But boys, I'll tell you this, uh, when, uh, when Christ went in, uh, the Word of God tells me uh, that he went in uh, and he said, hey, my, ha- my father's house uh, is what? Uh, it's a house of prayer. Uh, it's a house uh, and it's a holy house. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, uh, this book is a holy book. Uh, this book is a a prayerful book. Uh, this book is a powerful book. Uh, my God is a holy God. Uh, my God is one uh, that wants to get the job done uh, and he wants to help you uh, and he will help you uh, if you'll come to him uh, and prayerfully uh, sincerely uh, and brother come to him uh, as one of your, his children uh, and you you say, well, uh, preacher, I'm not a child of God. Uh, hallelujah, you can get that thing uh, fixed up right now. Uh, all you got to do uh, is come to God. Uh, uh, brother, come to Christ uh, through uh, the Holy Spirit uh, and come to Him uh, and ask God to save you. Uh, and brother, God will save you uh, and place your name on the roll. Uh, brother, be washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, And brother, uh, then God said uh, He'd wash away your sin uh, and place you uh, on the Lamb's book of life. Uh, And brother, you'll be a candidate for glory. Uh, Brother, you get in in a business-like manner. uh, And brother, God will fix you up. Brother, that's what it takes to go to glory. Brother, that's what it takes, uh, uh, brother, to get uh, a prayer uh, through the glory, uh, be able to pray for your loved ones. But in Isaiah 59, the Word of God said, Sin have separated you from your God. You can't, Mary and Martha couldn't go to God with sin in their life. It doesn't matter how sick Lazarus was or how dead he was. They had to get to God with sin out of their life. Let's read the Word of God. And the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick. And he said, as as named Lazarus, and of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Martha. Now, there's three people's names. All right? And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, and uh, that was the ointment that she had uh, set aside for her burying. She had bought it. All right? And the price of that ointment was approximately $45. And she had set it aside and she had worked out a full year to buy that. And she had went, you know where that ointment come from? I'll just let you in on a little secret. It come from Laodicea. She had bought it and she was preparing. She had uh, proud of that. But you know what she done? 
She just give it to Jesus. She just give it to him, washed his feet, and then dried it with her hair. All right? But the thing about it was, she, and, but she said, but my brother Lazarus is sick. My, but that, all of that washing and all of that was behind her. All right. Verse number three. All right. Three and four. All right. Therefore his sister sent unto him saying, Lord, I want you to look at that. That's what we want to hinge on right there. Amen. Lord. Lord, think about it. Now, brother, that's the word I want you to get a hold of today. I want, is he your Lord? Is he your Lord? Is he? Is he your Lord now? I'll tell you, he's got to be your Lord. Uh, if he's not your Lord, uh, boy, I'll tell you right now, uh, he, uh, he's got to be your Savior first and he's got to be your Lord. Uh, I thank God. Uh, whoo, glory. But uh, he's my Lord and my God. Uh, boy, i tell you, uh, he was their Lord. Uh, brother, but listen to this. Uh, he was uh, he said, uh, here. Uh, Lord, behold, uh, in whom thou lovest is sick. Uh, that tells me that old Lazarus boy, uh, he was uh, uh, the God's friend. Uh, he said, now look, uh, in verse number four, uh, and when Jesus heard it, uh, boy, I love it when God hears me. Uh, I love it when I can talk to him. Uh, this sickness is not unto death, uh, but for the glory of God. Uh, I'll tell you, boy, I love to get a prayer through, uh, and I know the glory's coming down. Uh, and he said, uh, he said, uh, but he said that the Son of God uh, might be glorified thereby. Heavenly Father, uh, add your blessings to the Word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, uh, now, uh, and how they prayed uh, for uh, their loved ones was we'll this. Uh, if in this moment uh, we have a friend or we have a relative uh, of any kind uh, who is ill, uh, how should we pray for that one? How should we pray? How, I want you to ask yourself this now. How should I pray for him? Uh, well, uh, how did Martha and Mary really pray for their brother. How did they pray? Brother, I'll tell you how they prayed. They prayed, Lord. They prayed, uh, Lord, I need some help. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, I like what uh, Brother Jay, uh, Jake said this morning. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, if you can't accept help, uh, if you won't take help, uh, and you won't admit that you need some help, uh, you're a fool. Uh, brother, I can say that under authority of the Word of God. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you, tell me what, uh, how I can say that. Uh, I'll tell you the rich young ruler uh, brother he left there uh, and he was a fool uh, because he walked away uh, Judas uh, brother he took 30 pieces of silver uh, threw it away uh, went and hung himself uh, he was a fool uh, boy I'll tell you uh, old Didymus uh, mother uh, uh, there a uh, rich man uh, brother uh, that uh, uh, died and went to hell. Uh, he trusted his riches. Uh, he was a fool to trust in all of that. Uh, why? Because uh, all he had to say uh, was, Lord, uh, Romans 10, 9, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, and God said, uh, Thou believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all thine heart uh, and just ask him to come in. Uh, and God to save you. Uh, brother, that's how simple it is. Uh, confess your sin, uh, brother, and God will save you. Uh, brother, it's foolish to die and go to hell uh, with heaven so near. Brother, uh, they prayed uh, with a deep sense of need. Brother, that's exactly how Mary and Martha prayed. They were quite naturally distressed. 
Brother, they were in the flesh. They were in need. Their brother was evidently very seriously ill. Praying for a loved one. Brother, you outside of this church, we got people that's ill all in this community. Everywhere you look. So what did they do? They prayed with a great sense of need. Look in verse three. Look at this. I want you, I want this to sink in to Mount Carmel. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Oh, look at that. Boy, I tell you, they wanted help. Uh, they needed somebody. Uh, they needed uh, the right one to get the job done. Uh, boy, I tell you right now, uh, uh, Jake uh, was uh, licking all the red off of my candy this morning. Uh, boy, I tell you, uh, you don't take uh, your car uh, to a dietitian. Uh, brother, uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, you don't go uh, chopping wood uh, or splitting wood uh, with a chainsaw. Uh, brother, you don't. Uh, you got to have the right tool to do the right job. Uh, and they went, uh, and boy, they hollered out, uh, Lord, uh, uh, my brother, uh, brother, I want to tell you, uh, and I go to God for Mount Carmel, uh, I go and say, Lord, uh, my family, uh, I want them saved. Uh, I want every person on every pew uh, to go to heaven with me. Why? They my family, Lord. I don't want one of them. I've walked down these aisles and asked God, oh, God's power over every pew. Boy, I tell you right now, if you go to hell from this church, you'll go to hell over my prayers. Brother, because I'll tell you right now, I love you and God loves you more. But brother, listen, they prayed with a deep sense, brother, of need. Number two, they prayed together. Number two, they prayed together. Look down in verse uh, number 32. Oh, look. Look what the Word of God says. Over in verse number 32, it says, And when Mary was come where Jesus was uh, and saw him, she fell down at his feet. And what did she saw? And do, look what, saying unto him. Look what did she say? She said, Lord, uh, boy, she knew him. Uh, she knew who she's talking to. Boy, I'm glad. Thank God I know him. Uh, I know him. Uh, I believe I'll know him when I see him. Uh, and uh, Zachariah said, uh, I'll know him by the wounds. Uh, brother, I ain't going to know him by no scars. Uh, boy, I'm going to know him. Uh, brother, and he's going to know me. Uh, why? Thank God he's going to know that a been washed in his blood. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, rejoice not in the things of this world, uh, but rejoice because your name's written down. Uh, Gene, we're going to be together in glory. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, we're going home one of these days. Brother, verse 32. She fell down at his feet saying, Lord... If thou hadst been there, my brother had not a died. She didn't understand it. Oh, we read about united prayer. There's a very sense in which prayer is empowered where two or more are praying together. Boy, I'll tell you, the church, when the church gets... What about the early church? What about the early church? Boy, when they got it together, he said they gotten, oh, they gotten one accord, and that wasn't a Honda either. Boy, they got in there, 
and know what about. And look, look in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, or chapter 12. Oh, in chapter 12, oh, the book of Acts. Let me just read you just a little bit. I, I, I know you're going to remember it when I saw it. I'm just going to read it just a little bit for the sake of time this morning. Oh, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop right there, but old Peter was in, in the prison. Okay, that crowd from the church was over there praying. It's over there sending up prayers and power coming down. Sending up prayers and power coming down. Boy, while the power was coming down, angel of God come down. And uh, boy, the angel went in that prison, unlocked old Peter's chains. Old Peter, uh, Peter thought he was uh, seeing the vision as the handcuffs fell off. Boy, he got, and, uh, the angel of God got him out, got him out of one side, took him out the other side, took out the doors and went out and from my inner prison, plumb out into the street. Peter didn't know what was going on. That's a Baptist preacher for you. All right. But the thing about it was he got him down the road and here come the Rhonda, uh, uh, Rhoda to the door and Rhoda come to the door. Now that's a lady circle for you. All right. And she didn't even know what was going on. She ran off to tell somebody. See what I'm telling you? She went to Walmart and she didn't know what they was doing. All right. And she went and told some of the rest of them and they thought she was crazy. All right. And so they went up to the door and Peter still standing there. They wouldn't let the preacher in. I told you it's a Baptist state convention. All right. And, but they wouldn't let him in. Finally, he got in. And he started preaching the Word of God. And boy, the whole, I mean, they got saved right and left. You know why? He called on the name of the Lord. He called on God. But he, Peter had power with God. But you know how he got there? People prayed for him in unity. The power of the church. The power of unity. Those people were praying in that house and power come down. Power come down. Why? Because they were calling on the Lord Jesus Christ to help their preacher. They wanted their man of God out of jail. All of the only thing against him was his preaching the word of God. They want him off of the street. You know what old Harry done? Harry went out there, don't have time to go over every bit of Harry went down there. Oh, he is madder than the Dickens. Boy, I mean, here, here comes the Mormon crowd. All right, and they wanted to come in there. You know what they done? They killed every one of them men that was stood guard at any post. But I'll tell you right now, that's what they done. They ought to kill them. Because they ought to listen to him as they put him in. Because he, he should never have been put in because he was preaching the Word of God. He was trying to get them saved and into glory. We need to stop a movement in this county. We need to stop a movement all over this county. You look how the devil is growing right and left all over this county. And look, look where we're at. Look how we need to call on the Lord. We need to call, get the Lord to send some workers down. We need the, the, the house is empty, but our, I mean, our fields uh, out here are white under harvest. There's people dying, going to hell everywhere. Drugs, everything is rampant everywhere. And brother, you tell them, oh, we're in church. We're in church. They need to learn. They need to learn. We need to teach them. We need to pray for our loved ones. These folks in this, uh, this whole community, they're our loved ones. 
we need to tell them about the power of God. Number three, their prayer, prayer was directed, was directed to the Lord. And the thing about it, look again to verse three. We look, the sisters, they cried unto the Lord. You might say, surely all prayer is directed to the Lord. No, it's not. What a wonderful thing it is when we pray to the Lord, we place our need directly. Now you think about it. You think about it. I got it. I'll just draw you a little note. We place our prayers directly in the hands of God. That prayer, you know, God, well, you know what He does? He bottles them up. Those prayers are bottled up. Our tears are bottled up. Read the book of the Revelation. It, it's not John's revelation. It's God's revelation to John. God said, I bottle him tears up. Him tears. I used to be in the study. Jeff come in with him and his friends. They'd come in and I'd be down in the study and he'd... I'd hear that little old hand say, we can't go in. Daddy's praying. Hey, boys. Boys, Daddy's, Daddy's praying. Let's wait till Daddy's done. I'd hear him out there. He said, let's bow our heads. Daddy's praying. Oh, boys. Oh, I go back to them times. Oh, I think about the times. I long for those times again. When our kids would come and knock on our door. Oh, we can't go in. Mommy and Daddy's praying. Oh, I tell you, Mary and Martha, somebody knock on their door and say, we can't go in. Their brother's dead. They're in there praying. They're getting a hold of God. They want their brother back. They're troubled. They're sorrowful. And the thing about it, the prayer here, they, they've asked for companionship of the Lord. Talk to God just like you talk to me or your loved one. Just like you'd sit and talk to your wife. Just talk to Him. Oh, I just talk to God. Just get down somewhere. Just go somewhere by yourself. Leave that old cell phone. Get rid of it. Get away from the house phone. Get away from everything. And just go out and talk to God. Just get it some time alone and talk to Him. My neighbor stopped the other day and I didn't tell Gene, but I've told him. I told Luke the other day, I said, Luke, I said, if you hear somebody up here in the woods, I said, don't get annoyed or don't shoot me. I said, I come up here and talk to God. I said, I've got to get along with him. I've just got to get along with God. I've just got to, I'll tell you, God got alone for me. He was alone. There they was nobody there to help him. He hung there by himself. He cried out, my God, my God. Why is thou forsaken me? There was nobody come down to help him. Even his father forsook him. 
And all, every bit of that was for me. And he didn't, he didn't deserve one bit of it. It was my sin that hung him there. But the thing about it is, the whole thing, their prayer was character. It was, it was their character. So the sisters sent for him. They, they, they went up just as far as they could go. And then they went and they said, you gotta come. Last. They prayed. I want you to notice this. They prayed with perfect submission. Perfect. Lord, behold. Now look, look, look at this in verse three. Lord, behold. Lord, I want you just to behold whom I look. Lord, Behold he whom thou lovest, he's sick. I like it to underline that word, Lord, here again. You will never know, friend, how much God loves you. Only way would you take another look at Calvary. Just go back and and he said hey, he said I I know he's sick I know he's dead or I know he's dying he said but all of this has just got to happen because I'm going to show them who I am Amen. I want them to see what's happening because I'm. He didn't tell them this, but he said, I'm going to the cross. But he said, I'm going to show them that I'm God. Hey, Lazarus, it was a bad, it was a sad part to this. Lazarus had to die again. Oh, I'll tell you, that was sad. It was sad when I think about this. If he died before these two sisters did, or either one of them, they would be grieved again. Because, but Lazarus was going to be raised a second time. Oh, think about it. He was going through two resurrections. Glory to God. Boy, one, he was going to remember, probably, I don't know, but the next one, Bless God, he was definitely going up and remember that. Hallelujah to God. Because he was going to be, if when he goes to heaven, he's going into the place of paradise, brother. Oh, hallelujah to God. He, the prayer, this prayer request, he, he, he didn't, it because the word Lord, it, it indicates you know the word Lord, I lo as you look it up, look it up, go home, look it up in that, uh, that our, uh, uh, dictionary. That thing, you know what it means? It means, may it means total submission. Total submission. Complete submission. Lisa, that's what it means. Get, get, get able to understand that. You, when you, when you get saved, when you get saved, you, 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 you're totally submitting yourself to God. You're totally, but you, you don't understand it all, but you grow into it. You grow into it. He's your Savior. Then you let Him and help Him and you total submission unto God. Oh, that's, that's what I love. I love, when you submit, you just totally submit to God. 
Oh, that's, that's when it gets good. Oh, that's when God just seems to bless you and that, uh, that just joy unspeakable and full of glory. And they were so blessed. And Mary and Martha did. They did not demand. You notice something. They never know where in these scriptures did they demand a resurrection or a healing of any kind. They just said, you whom thou lovest is sick. They're sick. They're sick. Lord, Lord, your buddy's sick. God knew the rest. Nowhere did they say, you need to get over here. You need to come by the house. You need to get come and eat, and I'll fix you string beans and all of this, or I'll fix you a salad this big, <laughs> uh, or I'll do this, or I'll do that, or I'll fix you a steak. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, boy, but you know, he didn't promise us that, uh, uh, Wendell. He didn't promise none of that. But he said, hey, whom thou lovest is sick. God, would you just come? Jane was sitting by, with my mom. I was putting a roof on, a, on our house wind and rain and tore it off. And I, I, I just begged God to let me talk or let me, just let me, let mom just wake up. She'd been in a coma for a week or more. And just before she died, Jean called me. And said, Dean, your mama wants to speak to you. And I thought, Lord God, Jean, you're crazy. Jean put mom on the phone. And mom said, Dean, I love you. Dean, I love you. Mom died. You tell me there's not a God. There is a God. Oh, had a godly mom. It had to be God to put up to us mean boys. He was very ill. But the main thing was, them girls said, God, I'm putting you, I'm putting him in your hands. Today, the last thing I'm going to say to you is this. If you've got a loved one right now that's lost, get, get them on your mind right now. Get them on your mind, ever who you are, ever who they are. Would you do that? Would you do it right now? I want you to get them on your mind. Right now, think about them. As I, as I mentioned this, do that. Just do that and I'll tell you why. God just, I want you to get them on your heart and in your mind totally. They had one thing on their mind, not ten things, not ten people, not twenty people. They had one request. One request did they have. And that was God save and help my brother. 
I want you to pray for that one request right now as we stand. I want you to pray for that one request. I'm going to lead you in prayer. And we're going to close with this prayer. And I want you to have that one person that you know is lost or needs the help of God right now. Put that one person in the hands of God right now before God Almighty and turn them loose. Just turn it loose to God and we're going home. Heavenly Father and Almighty God as I pray and I bow in Your presence and my hands are folded upon Your book. I've tried this morning, Lord, to honor you with the message, God, that I have and had. Now, Lord, it's in the hands of you and this people. Lord, I pray, dear God, for every soul upon every heart, but I can only reach you with one. With one today, Lord Jesus, I'm reaching for one. And Lord, that one today, I'm praying, dear God, that one, Lord Jesus, I'm praying that will, dear Lord, turn their life over to You. A wonderful person, Lord that is on my heart right now. And Lord, they need to be saved. They need to be under the blood. And God, You and only You can save them, Lord. And God, I put them in Your hands. Lord, I've witnessed many times, many times over. But today, God, I'm leaving them at Your feet. I'm going to leave them there. Not saying I won't witness to them again, but Lord God, I'm going to leave them there. I'm going to put them there believing and trusting that You're going to save them, Lord. And help me guide them, Lord, when I see them, and help them, Lord, help me, Lord, to encourage them to come before You and accept You. Lord, help me be an encouragement and live for You when I stand before You. Help me stand every day before them as it were my last day and help me be an encouragement, but help me put them every day right at Your feet. Thank You, Lord, for the Word of God. Thank You for Your power, for Your strength, for Your love. Thank You for my wife, for my children, for my brothers, my grandchildren, my family as a whole, my great-grandchildren. Thank You for Sister Faith. Lord, I pray, dear God, that You would just bless her and give her strength. I thank You for all that You do and have done. Bless now this church body, and God have your way in every heart. In Christ's name, amen.